Welcome to the EPISD Digital Discoveries, exploring the world of education technology in the El Paso Independent School District. Hi, my name is Tim Holt and welcome to this segment of Digital Discoveries. Today we're going to look at something very, very interesting that um, we found on the internet and a couple of weeks ago we were talking about why teachers would want to read other teachers' blogs. And uh, today is an excellent example of why you'd want to do that. Um, we found a blog called Classroom in the Cloud. Here it is right here. It's classroominthecloud.net. And um, on that website, we found <laughs> this entry from October 4th. And it was called Five Awesome Things That You Can Do with an iPad and an LCD projector. Now, we know that not everybody out there has iPads yet, but they are becoming kind of common in, in our school district. So we thought, well, if you got an iPad and you don't have uh, some of this equipment, we can show you how you can actually use the iPad for more than just surfing the internet, which is what a lot of people think these devices can do. So in, with this particular uh, entry that we saw, uh, and we got this great idea, we saw that you could actually turn your iPad into a document camera. So if you're looking on that, this picture here, it's a, it's a way to turn an iPad into a document camera. So if you don't have a document camera in your classroom, we're going to show you how you can take an iPad and turn it into a document camera. So let's look at some of the parts that you're going to need uh, to do that. The first part that you're going to need to turn your iPad into a document camera is a ring stand and a clamp. Now, most teachers have no idea what a ring stand is unless you're a science teacher. So this is a ring stand. This is what a ring stand looks like. It's, uh, it's a, a, a common piece of equipment in science classrooms all over the district, especially middle school and high school. If, you're, if you know a chemistry teacher or a physics teacher, they've got tons of these things. These are called ring stands. Now, there's different kinds of ring stands. There's ones that are very light. There's ones that are very, very heavy. You want to find one that's got a pretty substantial base here. The base is very important. You don't want a very a light ring stand because it'll tip over. We want one with a pretty good solid base. So a couple of pounds there or more is, is a, a really good thing. Right here is the clamp on the ring stand. Now you're also going to need something to hold your iPad up. And you just need some kind of rigid surface. In our case, we're using a three ring binder that we found uh, that nobody was using. And so we're going to just use this three ring binder. I know that these are all over the place and uh, uh, kids have a tendency to throw these out a lot. And so uh, you find a three ring binder, let's use that. Of course, you're going to need an iPad. We have an iPad here. Uh, you're going to need the cable to connect your iPad. This is a VGA out cable. Uh, this connects your iPad to your LCD projector. And just like any other document camera, you're going to have to have an LCD projector as well. So let's, uh, let's look at how to do this here. Um, we're going to go uh, set this up. It's pretty simple to do. Here's how we're going to do it. You're going to take your, your uh, rigid surface where you're going to mount your iPad, and you want to connect it somehow to your ring stand. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to open it up and put it in here. And one of the things that you want to do is you want to make sure that you, you uh, really mount it uh, uh, very sturdily. You want it to be very, very tight. You want it as tight as you possibly can. Now, what we did with our, with our little improvised uh, uh, stand here is that we, we liked using the, the, the uh, three-wing binder because you can use this part here on the back as a little more support. And you can, of course, raise this up and down as you see fit. Uh, we just we raised it down just a little bit, lowered it down just a little bit, so it acts as a support for our document camera. So we're going to lower it just a little bit and put it right there. OK. So we've got that. Now we've got a rigid surface. And so now what we're going to do is we want to test it. Now we want to make sure that you don't have too much play. And another important part is you want this part of your ring stand, unless you have a very, very heavy ring stand, you want this to be on the same side as the document camera, your iPad itself, because otherwise it'll tip over backwards, and you don't want that to happen. So we're going to put this up here like that, 
And we're going to switch programs here on our, on our iPad. There, every iPad has a, uh, has a program called Camera on it. And um, you can see on my iPad that I've got here, you can see we've got this thing called Camera. And so we're going to turn Camera on. Once you turn Camera on, you can see we've got uh, a document camera. We've got this document camera sticking out. I'm going to move it just a little bit so that we can use our surface here. And so, what are you going to use a document camera? What are, some, what are some uses for a document camera? Well, teachers like to show students written text under a document camera. So we kind of use it as a, a modern day uh, uh, overhead projector. So here, for instance, this is a biology textbook. And don't get the idea that we're just doing science here. That's not the case at all. But <laughs> we just, uh, it's just we happen to have a science textbook here. So say we're a, a teacher. We want to show them how to, how to use uh, uh, whatever we're talking about here. It looks like we're talking about the digestive system or something like that. Um, here we're talking about squids or you know, all different kinds of stuff. And so you can see you've got full color. Another neat thing about it is that with this particular program, it's, if you tap on the screen, you can actually zoom in on your figures. So you can actually, just like on a real document camera, you can actually zoom in and focus, and you can zoom back out. You see that? And another really interesting thing that we like about this is that not only can we zoom in, which we are going to do right there, but you can also take a picture of it. So just that little camera down there at the bottom, that little thing, you take it. I've just taken a picture of that uh, screen. Um, I can also go back to my, my pig picture or whatever <laughs> that was, and we can, we can take a picture of that. Another very interesting thing that you can do with this is that you can make the switch over in the lower right-hand corner. You can make the switch over to camera. So then you can actually uh, videotape things that are going on. So say, for instance, you're trying to show students uh, a frog dissection or something that involves your hands. You can see, I'm just using my hands here as an example, but if we have something that we want to manipulate underneath the, the camera, you can record it. So I can hit the record button, and I can start recording it to show students over and over again what we just did. So if a student didn't quite get how to mix chemicals or how to dissect that frog or, or how to manipulate those, uh, those uh, um, whatever they were, you know, the math manipulatives, you can record that to show them again and again and again, and it'll pop right back up. And on your iPad, you can actually show that to them. I'm going to show it. start recording it to show students over and over again. So you see here, what we're doing is we're just playing what I just did. So that's how, that's how you can actually use the, uh, the camera, uh, the, do the iPad, as a document camera. And so there are some actual programs that go with that. We're going to look at those in an upcoming segment at some of the programs that we can actually use for our document camera, but I want you guys to start thinking about what can you use a document camera for that uh, you don't normally do in your classroom? What can your students use a document camera for um, that you may not uh, think about doing? And if you don't have a document camera, but you do have iPads on your campus, you've got the setup here using a ring stand, a rigid surface, an iPad, the VGA adapter, and uh, that's all you need. And, uh, of course, you need the LCD projector. But that's all you need to get a, a, a document camera from an iPad. Thanks for joining me for this segment of Digital Discoveries. Thank you for joining us on the EPISD's Digital Discoveries. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we look forward to seeing you next time.